We are talking to one of the biggest celebrities to ever get involved in professional wrestling with Tiny Zeus Lister. Now, Jonathan, you mentioned Zeus. We keep calling him Tiny Zeus Lister because that's, as a wrestling fan, what we know him from the most, uh, being Zeus in No Holds Barred. Uh, But, I mean, this man doesn't sleep. He has a ton of films coming out. He's going to be in The Human Centipede 3 next year. He's working on the film with Russell Crowe that will also be out. He's filming a movie in November called Money is King, and he just filmed Comedy Bang Bang for IFC with David Allen Greer. The man does it all. He's anywhere and everywhere. He's a spokesperson for Monster Energy Drink. Uh, but more importantly, Jonathan, we're going to have to talk to him. He's coming into the studios right now as we speak. And, uh, you know, he, he called out, he was called out by John Cena a few months ago. Check this clip out. Let me guess. Your new brilliant scheme is to commemorate the re DVD release of No Holds Barred. You went for Over the Limit and got me Zeus as my next opponent. Oh, no, he didn't. Yes, he did, and he does not look happy. I guess let's find out what Zeus has to say to John Cena. First off, uh, welcome, Tiny. Uh, Thanks for joining us tonight on another wrestling podcast. Hey, I got some news for y'all, baby. (laughs) And y'all gonna break it, okay? Breaking the news tonight? I want y'all to break the biggest news. In the wrestling world, okay? All right. I want you to send a message. Do you understand me? We hear you. I'm just going to say I'm frightened right now. <laughs> no, you better fasten your seatbelts. You better sleep with your lights on because I'm from Compton, California. I'm 6'5", 285 pounds. I got a serious suntan. I'm from the biggest gang city in the world. So everything I say is real. This is the cat that you might come up, ended up in somebody's trunk. But you need to send a message to my cat right now. Because my manager, Cindy Cowens, the godmother to my daughter, my pimp, she showed me something that was released in June. And it was the, after 20 years, they released the No Holds Bar starring me and Pooh Butt Hulk Hogan. But you need to tell that guy named John uh, Cena, whatever his name is, that's trying to be street. I'm a real cat. I'm from the hood. I did Tupac's second to his last movie. I work with Cube. I work with 50 Cent, the Tech Nine. I work with Snoop Dogg. I work with Dr. Dre. I work with Akon. I work with Rick Ross. I work with Chameleonaire. I work with Fresh Montana. Man, you tell the cat. I heard he called me out, said he'll take on Zeus. Uh-oh. Well, tell him Zeus is answering his phone call. I'd like to meet him in the ring and shook night his ass, okay? Tell him that. Tell him I'm going to make him my little bitch, okay? If he's a real cat, if the WWE can get their manhood back up, call a real cat from the hood. And I ride the bicycle like I rode in the hit movie Friday, and I have some high shoes on, and I would beat him down. And i will let Hulk Hogan sit in his little wheelchair on the side and watch. If you need a referee, get the rock. But don't call me out if you're going to play. This ain't Flipper. This is Charles. So, John Yersina, I'm calling you out to all your fans. You want to come do a reality show? Take that makeup off, John. Oh. It don't look good on you. Be a real cat. Real cats don't wear makeup, John. Get off that reality show. I meet your ass in the ring. Wow, John. In your house. And I'm calling you out. Because I see the WWE that got too damn soft. Y'all wear makeup. <laughs> hanging, out, hanging out with Shamar Moore. Hey, you need to be hanging out with the hood. <laughs> don't play like you're a rapper. Be one. John, I grew up in Compton, California. I went to Compton High School. You better sleep with your lights on. You might end up in somebody's truck. You messing with me, fool. <laughs> hey, all your Junior Cena fans, you would get, he's a paper champion. Meet me in the ring. Wow. And I'll beat your ass. Mm. Make you change your name to bitch. Oh, did, did you get the message? Did you get the message? I, I oh. think we got it. Wow, Jonathan. Uh, I heard he, he, he showed me on tape where he said he'll whoop Zeus. He, I, I just, I just, I've never messed with this cat. I find him kind of funny. You know, me yeah. and I was watching him on TV, like watching comedy. <laughs> so I'm, I'm up here 
like he he, he and when they released the thing, he said with his his head in a cast uh in some kind of badges, I take on Zeus. Well fool, you're talking to Zeus now. Wow. And I'll meet you any place on earth. And I'll meet you in the WWE and I I need to read I need to retrain everybody in the WWE. Y'all done got too soft. Y'all let the MMA take over. But if you want to bring the Raiders back up, we'll bring a real gangster from Compton, fool. And I'll bring my hip-hop friends. I'll bring Snoop. I'll bring Cube. I'll bring them all. Get your Raiders back up because it takes real men to get the Raiders up. Boys, King, my grandmother said it's a difference between a man and a boy. They both got penises. Which one are you? Hey, John, which one are you? You better sleep with your lights on, fool. Wow. I should night your ass. <laughs> Did you get the point across? Did you understand the message, all you little wrestling fans? Wow, we I we got it, Jonathan. Man, I don't know about you. This could be a this could be a setup for WrestleMania next year. What do you think? Oh, what? Hey, I left at the top. How do you think I was coming back? This is the most. That's the biggest character actor in Hollywood. I've done almost two hundred movies. Okay, I've done two hundred movies. I don't wear makeup, John. John, real actors from the hood don't wear makeup, Johnny. <laughs> Johnny, hey, what you gonna do? Wear some high heels next, Johnny? Johnny, you see what you gonna do? You, oh, you call that acting? Stay out them cowboy movies, John. Stay out them cowboy movies, John. That's not acting. That's degrading who you are. Wow. Wow, Jonathan. So uh, we have the, the yeah, challenge. About something? <laughs> yeah, man. The, the, the challenge has been issued. Breathe. Hey, hey. Y'all can breathe and y'all can talk now, too. Raise it. <laughs> you can put your hand down. Yeah, I was going to say, I had my hand up the whole time. This is, <laughs> they, this they is amazing. The they, go, they, they got the message loud and clear. Wow. <laughs> Definitely. And uh, Cindy Congress would negotiate my deal. Oh. Man, uh, I hope. <laughs> I hope to see you two in the ring, though. I mean, that, if anything, is calling out Cena, responding to him calling you out, so. Hey, I didn't mess with nobody. But you call a real cat out from the hood, they will answer your call. You got to watch what you're doing, you know what I'm saying? Because you start acting like you're tough, and you're acting like you hip-hop. I'm not, I'm not bothering nobody. I'm doing my movies. I'm the first black president in a $100 million film. I saved Gotham City and Dark Knight. Now I'm with the hottest sportswear company in the world. Faith, forever faith, forever faith. My main man, Abraham, and Ron Brown is the, is the, is the, the owners of the company. They let me be a spokesperson. Even I'm always doing something about God. But then when somebody, but Cindy Collins, my manager, she pulled up the thing in, on the internet. And John saying about it, my name should have never came out of his mouth. My name should have never came out of his mouth. You can't pretend to be hood. You got to be hood. Okay? You got I'm it. from the biggest hood city in the world. <laughs> well, so I'm... now everybody has got to t- deal with the consequences. Sleep with your lights on America. You don't woke up the wrong giant. Well, I mean, we've we've got a lot to cover today. We have to we have to get in it. You've said it several times now. You are a native Californian from the tough streets of Compton. How did you get to where you are today? Because of because of God, because the blessings of Jesus Christ, I you know I know I didn't want to be a blood or a crip. I know I didn't want to sell drugs when I was going to the cop. I wanted to be something different, so I started you know uh, running with this cat named Jesus, and I wanted to do something different. I knew I was different. I knew what, one day I would meet somebody like a Cindy Collins, and uh, she would take me to the next level in my career. And um, the last thirty years, I just been grinding. You know, a lot of my friends are rappers. You know, L. Cool J. I work with all the cats, man. I, I done work with so many rappers, and I like working with them. And that keeps you fresh. It keeps you focused on what you got to do. I'm also a spokesperson for Monster Energy Drink. I've been with them for four years. Um, I'm about to do it. I'm, I'm a spokesperson for this company, uh, uh, this medical company. Just got back from Orlando doing their, their, um, their conference, and it was a, it was a success. And um, I'm just always doing things with kids. Man, letting kids know they can do something different. They ain't got to be a game banker. Sure. They ain't got to sell drugs. They can be different. Yeah. And, I, and being from Compton with the Compton High School, with the Cal State LA, was a national shot put champ and broke the school record seven times in one year. Wow. Um, I knew I wanted to do something different. And Ron Brown was uh, from a track club that I was a part of, Stars and Stripes back then. And Ron was this, the lead athlete. 
ran 10.02 in the 100 meters, was on the relay team that set the world record when Carl Lewis ran anchor. Ryan ran second late. They, they set the world record at 38.03. Um, so you got Olympic gold medal. So I always want to be – I was born in the basement. See, confidence is like being born in the basement. I want to be in a penthouse. I live in Marineville right now in a city club, live on the water. And I asked God when I was 16 years old, if you God, will you make my backyard water? And I live on the water. Huh. And I've been living like that through God's grace and mercy for a while. And uh, I just want to tell them kids that all things is possible. Yeah. If they just keep the focus. How did I get Cindy? How did I get Cindy? Cindy's one of the hottest, most beautiful divas in Hollywood. Intelligent, smart. Just cool as heck, man. But anybody can just hang out with her. Even the people that I'm um, running with, mm-hmm. just the right kind of people. And just cause you from a place that they said death comes, that man, man, it's always lied. So I speak life, and I am I'm a representative of of, of, of a place where nothing good is supposed to come from. But man, man's a liar. Mm-hmm. So when you got God on your side, you can do all things. Yeah. And that's what I tell kids. You can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. Mm-hmm. If, you if you're Jewish, shalom, shalom. I run with Rabbi, Rabbi Pinto. That's my main cast. <laughs> <laughs> I run with the biggest Mexican pastor in the world um, out of Guadalajara. I'm, I'm all over the world doing stuff for um, the kingdom of God. And um, I got one tattoo on my body. It's Luke chapter 10, verse 19. So if I'm going to put something on my body, it's going to be the blood. It's going to be the blood. I don't play with stuff, man. When you come from Compton, you don't you don't have time to, to pussyfoot around. Mm. Okay, everybody want to be hard. Well, I, 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 we used to have shoot up at our school at lunchtime, and you just praying that you don't get hit with one of them bullets. So when you have a, um, everything I do is, is, I like watching my westerns. But when you wake me up, you woke up, you have woke up heaven and hell. Because the Bible says, Matthew eleven twelve, the kingdom of violence and the violence will take it by force. And that's who I am. I will come take it by force. I won't ask to come through your door. I'll come through your damn wall. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have me get on that bicycle, get that duct tape, and get some ostriches <laughs> out, and put you in the new Friday. And for all you people out there, we doing one. I called, I ran this, Mark, I ran the Ice Cube's manager at the airport yeah. six weeks ago, and he said, Ice Cube, the new deals over at Universal, so we're going to be doing maybe something called Saturday. Same cast, different script. But I'm going to still be the bad guy <laughs> as, I do, as I get through mopping everything up in the WWE if they ain't man enough to call the real cat. <laughs> now, t- t- we t- got to say that Compton Pop go to Weasel. Weasel go Pop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Tiny, you mentioned uh, you know you excelled in track and field, and you even went to Cal State University. And you said you know you won 1982 Division II National Shopo Championship. Yeah. Do you ever wish that you stuck with sports exclusively, or that was just something that you loved doing back then? Well, I, I want you, you, your heart. You know, when you when you have success at a at a young age, you always gonna fall in love with that the most. You know, but you see that you 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 just a vessel here to help young kids. And have them step in their purpose and destiny. But when um, if you put a track and field track, let me tell you why track and field and and um, the homeboy like in, in um, Michael Phelps and that swimming track and field. Either you gonna get a, either you good or you gonna get exposed. Mm-hmm. There's no place to hide on a football field. You can have weaker players on a baseball team. You can have weaker players. And the, the, the like LeBron James is a strong player. He's the greatest in the world. He makes up for other people's weaknesses. Mm-hmm. But in track and field, if you're not good at something, there's no bush to hide behind. Yeah. Your butt going to get revealed <laughs> as a weak person. And that's why I like it because you, you, learn you learn how to overcome your insecurities at a young age because you handle pressure. And life is about pressure. Who can have, the Bible says, iron shop is iron. That's what the Bible says. So I'm from a place that I can handle pressure because they used to have shootouts at, at my school. And um, through God's grace and mercy, I was protected. And all the game bankers loved me because when I was just doing a shot put at Compton High School, I was all league. I did at Long Beach City College. I became All American. Then when I went to Cal State LA, I became national champion. 
And they asked me to break the school record one time. Just break, come here, sign a scholarship for two years, and break the school record. I broke it seven times in one year. I dedicated my career to Ron Suttles. They got hung in Signal Hill by the police department. It was wrongly, and, they, and, they, and so that was my that was a friend of mine. Mm-hmm. So you, I'm t- you're talking to a real cat <laughs> that we deal with real issues. You know what I'm saying? My friend get hung in Signal Hill by the police department. So when you got these little fake wrestlers mm, talking, oh. dressing like they hood, <laughs> and they oh. grew up in Palisades or Disneyland. Tell Mickey, John, I said hello. <laughs> mm. Well, I'm glad you brought up the, the WWE. Um, this is one of the big things that we wanted to ask you about. Um, the movie, No Holds Barred, you starred in. That was one of the you know the best WWE movies that they've ever produced. Now, how did you, mm-hmm. get, how did you get involved with No Holds Barred? It was simple to audition for it. The word on the street, they was looking for somebody big and ugly with a suntan. Well, damn. <laughs> Everybody said, wait, we know Ty Lister. Because, <laughs> you know, um, I think there was even auditioning white guys at first. And Vince finally got it that um, two white guys fighting or two black guys fighting don't make the same heat that a big black guy and a, and a big white guy fighting. Mm-hmm. And then you got to understand something when I came. By me coming from the hip-hop, see, all my friends are rappers. So the hip-hop came too. So Vince touched something he never touched before. He touched the hip-hop world. Because whoever touches the hip-hop world will run the world. Because hip-hop on social media is the biggest thing in the world. You got, you got, you got Jay-Z. You got, you got Puffy. You got, you got Luda. You know, Fast and Furious. Look at you got you got Cuba and Twenty One Drive Jumpster. You got Luda and Fast and Furious. You, you, you um, and you got Tyrese is over there. All that's hip hop. Mm-hmm. So I belong to the hip hop world. And these are all my friends, man. So I run with the I run with rebels because I don't fit in real good. Clicks I don't fit in. So you know, you know, um, I like to get back there and um. Teach uh, John, you seen about a ghetto massage. <laughs> that, <laughs> that, now, Tiny, prior to No Holds Barred, were you a fan of pro wrestling, or did you ever get into it when you were uh, younger? I'm going to tell you who I used to watch back in the day. I used to watch The Rock's father, Soul Man, Rocky Johnson. I used to watch Bubba Brazil. I used to watch um, Terry Funk. I used to watch... Um, um, I used to watch, I used to watch um, the cat that used to jump off the ropes, um, the Samoan cat, or the, or, and let me not be disrespectful and be ignorant. It might be he might even be Tonga. I don't know if he's I don't know if he's Samoan or Tonga. Jimmy Sufasuka. Yeah. I used, to, I used to watch Jimmy, and he he was a he was a big supporter of me when I was in the WWF when it was the WWF, and uh, now it's the WWE. So. Uh, he made sure I was comfortable there. See, I created a lot of jealousy over there. You know what I'm saying? And I might even create it from my own camp, you know, because, you know, um, the word on the street that um, even Hulk got jealous of me. And me and Hulk got the same agent. But it don't make no damn difference to me because, see, when I got Dark Knight, I ain't had no but no, They're looking for people that can act. Mm. <laughs> Now, I'm going to ask you real quick, because this was a question later, but you, since you just brought it up, I want to know. Yeah. If you had been the villain in The Dark Knight, do you think there would have even needed to be a third movie? Because you would have taken out Batman, right? Well, well, like you said, it that was the cheddar on the on the Internet. It's tiny. And um, and and so the, the only time I, I thought, you know... Um, the, the the people was asking why ain't Tiny playing the bad guy in the second one, and you answered the question. I mean, come on, man, if, man, come on, come on, that guy, that dude walk around that spandex, the Batman, so he would have had problems, man. Because I would have took it to him. You see, what I'm trying to get you to understand is, I I work in London all the time. It's a lot of great. I work with the great Rachel Weisz from London, mm-hmm. that won an Oscar. I didn't work with Eddie Zod. 
I didn't work. See, you can't just grab somebody because you said that's the, one of the best classical trained actors. When Tupac put me in game related and Suge Knight called me that night, they knew my presence was coming through my skin can make Tupac look vulnerable. Because Tupac Shakur was a classical trained actor. Mm. But if you go back and look at game related, he looks like a victim about to happen in that scene because I'm so scary on camera and I make you feel it. And that's acting. It's not what you say. It's what you comes through your skin. And I make people understand that I'm the baddest guy on a movie set on earth. And I would have took Dark Knight rising to another level because I have a lot of things to pull from. I have a lot of pain to pull from. And, 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 and you got to remember this about a movie. You only good at the bad guy. <clears throat> that guy that guy made me laugh when I watched the movie because he, oh, man, I'm from hell. Compton Hell is a local call, man. I, shit, I ain't, it was on the, you, you heard about it. It was on the internet. Everybody said, what kind he must going to play? Bang and Dark Knight. <laughs> Now, uh, Tiny, you, you stepping back for a few seconds, you said there was a little bit of jealousy from Hulk Hogan, and uh, is that why we never saw a Zeus versus Hogan 3, or, you know, maybe... Well, the deal was on the table in 1989 for me to get a half a million dollars, mm-hmm. and him to get two million, and Vince asked me to carry the belt, and it's hard to be um, represented at an agency, because it's, it's like, if you have, you have the Hulk Hogan, you handle me, it's kind of like the conflict of interest, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So I never got um, the real scope, but the word on the street, if you go out there and check in Atlanta, Georgia, any big wrestling city, that, uh, you know, Hulk was jealous too. And and, and I'm a real actor, man. I work with the greatest actors in the world, so I can say what the hell I want to say. <laughs> and, and, I'm, and, and, and I don't walk with no bodyguards, so anybody want to try me. I'm easy to find. Well, I would imagine that people would have to be absolutely insane to try to do this. But in in the world of professional wrestling, they call them ribs or like jokes whenever they try to like pull pull something on maybe the new guy. Uh-huh. Was that ever done to you in WWF? Hell yeah, they had to park. They parked me a little bit, and I'm gonna go see. That's why I said I'm gonna go sit there and lie about nothing. They 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 I, they built me up, so I'm an outsider. So it's a lot of jealousy. So you can't make money unless you fight Hulk. So. I had Hulk locked down for the next six months in Survivor Series. So, well, and they put me in the they made me the main event of Survivor, Steel Cage match, and SummerSlam. And they had WrestleMania on the table. And um, uh, I was taking a shower one time, <laughs> <laughs> and I was feeling myself. I was uh, six five three oh five, bitch, about five seventy five. Oh, you couldn't tell me nothing. Shit. <laughs> Take the snake through that big old pipe that snake in there with my butt. Oh. <laughs> I, I start talking like Prince and Michael Jackson. <laughs> my voice changed. I didn't know my voice would get that high. <laughs> <laughs> so they had to humble my butt because they built me up so big, right? Yeah. And they said, welcome to the family. They were saying, welcome to the family. <laughs> nice. But, uh, man, I, I, one thing about uh, Catherine, we tell the truth, man. We ain't got no reason to lie. I ain't going to try to play like I'm a tough guy, but I grew up in a place where most people would, would start crying and become what they really are. And so when you talk to a cat that then did it, that made it, you know, it's just like you asked me about the Batman, the Dark Knight thing. Everybody, that, that's the word, that was the word on the internet. I got to be playing that role. And, and, and so I just say it's an over it's an overlook that they, they made they made a decision that um I thought they could have made another uh five hundred million dollars with me playing it because hip hop would have came with me. For the WWE Hall of Fame, they in, they induct a lot of uh, actors and celebrities and stuff who have been with them over yeah, the time. Yeah. Now, if the if the time if and when hopefully you get inducted into the Hall of Fame, who would you have induct you? If you had to pick anybody, I don't know if they're just throwing it out there. It'd probably be like um, I'm a. It would have to be one of my rapper friends, or uh, 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 Deion Sanders, or uh, either or uh, either Abraham or uh, Ron Brown, or maybe even Cindy Collins. She's there because she be wearing them. She be wearing them red heels. 
I don't have a lot of friends. I don't have a lot of friends. Um, uh, I, I'm, I'm cool, you know. And so Deion Sanders, if somebody pops in my head, or Ice Cube, or it would have to be somebody like that, you know what I'm saying, uh, or Ice-T, mm-hmm. you know, because those are, those are the only people I run with, man. And, um, I'm not... I'm, I, I'm a good, or, or even Judge Mathis. I'm, I love Judge Mathis. So uh, it had to be somebody like that. All right. It hey. wouldn't. It wouldn't be nobody from their world because I'm not really cool with nobody from their world. Only person I'm cool with that I, 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 I see on the on the red carpet, I see The Rock. So I'm a big fan of The Rock. I think The Rock is the best thing that ever happened to the thing outside of Hulk Hogan. Now I think The Rock is the most charismatic cat that I've ever met. You just finished the Human Centipede three, the final sequence. Yeah. Um, what can we? For, I just got a lot of questions actually, but what can we expect from this movie? Movie. Well, Cindy Collins is a diva. She's one of the best producers in Hollywood. You know, she does fifteen twenty million dollar films. She did a movie called Red Light with Robert De Niro, Sakona Weaver. So she, the A list of the A list. So. She go. She made sure on you know, Human Centipede three they took a lot of stuff out in me. So you know they. She just you know they, you because I have a brand. So I told them my brand is bigger than their brand. So you're not gonna just demoralize my brand. So they wanted me in the movie. Uh, we we didn't take the role for three. We passed on the movie three times. Mm-hmm. Cindy wanted a certain way, and they and they had to get it that, that way. And they got that way, and I went and did the movie. I'm looking forward. That's a genre I want to be in. Because isn't Human is Centipede 3, is that, is that horror? Yeah, so yeah. I want, I want to go to horror places like I go for the wrestling and like I go when I go sign autographs for Monster Energy Drink. I want to go do autograph sessions. Like when I did the um, Cleon for Enterprise. I, mm-hmm. I like going to them places and autograph, sign autographs and meeting the people and letting the people know that I'm cool as heck. You know what I'm saying? I'm the nicest guy in the world, man. I'm the biggest baby in the world. <laughs> if you do something to disrespect me, then you don't walk. You don't walk up. The, you don't walk up the biggest fool in the world. And I can handle myself because I just, I just, I just like watching TV and watching my westerns. So I don't like people calling me out because I ain't never been called out. Before. Ain't nobody ever said nothing bad to me like that before on oh. television. Well, I can whoop up this person. You ain't shit, man. Because <laughs> you wear hip hop, don't mean you hip hop. It's in your own damn mind. You know what I'm saying? That's, see, you, that's what I said. You can t- take on a gimmick and play like you somebody. But I'm hood. I'm from I'm from hell. Shit. Yeah. But I get that. Yeah. I'm cool, man. Dude, <laughs> got me upset, man. I'm, I'm ready to lay hands on somebody. Ain't going to be for Jesus either. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to make sure that we get this out to make sure that he hears this because. Yeah, he, tell Vince McMahon, if he wants his radius back to the roof, call a cat that everybody loves. You can't just make up something. You can't get another big black guy and make him be something. Well, can't now make I, Shamal Moore beat me. I think after can't make you're done, Reigns beat me. Come on. I, I think after you're done with John Cena, he may be part of the Human Centipede. Oh shit! This this man's gonna be big. Shoot, he's gonna walk around with lipstick and powder and put him in some heels when I get through with his ass. You said that how. Uh, you like meeting your, the fans at all these conventions. Now, we know that you're going to be at our, our friends next year at FanFest 5 in Rhode Island. Uh, anything you want to tell your fans that uh, that will be coming out to see you? Anything they can expect from meeting you? Yeah, let them know I'm going to do a movie called Money is King. I tell my fans I'm still working with Monster Energy Drink. Uh, I'm working with uh, Forever Faith, new sporting line. And uh, I got it all right now, foreverfaith.com. I got some unfinished business in the WWE. So uh, everybody fasten your seatbelt because Jaws is ready to come back out and play. (laughs) (laughs) We have seen that you're, uh, you know, a former pro wrestler. You've been in tons of movies like Friday, but we understand you just wrapped a guest appearance on IFC's comedy show, Comedy Bang Bang. That was cool. That's, that reminds me of working with people like the late John Candy, you know. Just people, they fast, they witty, and we and you live on the edge, and you, just, you do a, little, a lot of improv. And when they told me David Allen Greer was coming to work on the set, I I didn't I didn't have no, I just, I, I love David, David Allen Greer. I love 
working with how, how fast and witty he is and how comical he is. So I like working with really good people, professionals. So I enjoyed myself over there, had a good time, and y'all can see me over there. And I'm the military uh, sergeant from hell. So if y'all saw uh, off um, Richard Gere in that movie with uh, Lou Gossip, Matt, make that times a thousand and you got me because I'm the person you don't want to have to take orders from. Tiny, uh, we have to say you were probably one of the most interesting people we have ever had on our show. Uh, have you ever been approached to write an autobiography on your life? Not yet, but hey, if you can work that deal, I'm sure appreciate it, baby. <laughs> hey, I'm always looking for some new money. <laughs> <laughs> I got a six-year-old daughter, man, named Faith Grace. And I asked God for a double portion. That's why I named her Faith Grace. So um, I'm, 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 I'm about to take care of my little girl. So... I would love to do an autobiography on my life. So if you got the hookup, you got I'll it. cut you in, baby. <laughs> <laughs> now, I would love are, to do one, though. All right. Absolutely. Uh, one of the things that came from the being in the Friday movies is now actually a huge part of pop culture. The term debode is used all the time. Um, how does it feel to have an entire word dedicated to you? It feels good, you know. When when I was uh, in the WWE, I was doing something nobody else did, you know. What I'm saying, and um, at a young age, and um, to be a part of pop of hip hop, and and for the like you said, if you're in football and boxing, what happened? Uh, somebody just got Devo. It's just it's beautiful, man. It's beautiful, and now I'm looking for the next one. You know, I'm looking for the next role to tell pop culture how much I love them. And I'm just sending back the love they give me because when I'm at the malls, wherever I'm at, man, people go crazy. And um, um, I, I I want everybody to understand um, wrestling is hard. Um, I was blessed and I was taking care when I was there, but I got broken up a little bit. And we get broken up, we got to keep on going. Mm-hmm. And he had my nose broken in the movie. But being part of people like Deion I'm saying, the NFL, Deion Sanders and Michael Irvin and, and Warren Sassay on the NFL Network every week, hey, you just got Debo. You know, you just got Debo. Hey, man, that person just got Debo. He just got knocked. So you, are, you already know the rest of the word. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, Tiny, your, your current... Your current role in life may be your best to date. You've been reaching out to young kids and even going to churches, sharing your powerful life story. Uh, why is it so important to you to give back? And, uh, how, you know, tell us a little bit about that. Man, I met a, well, it's like this. I'm not good at nothing else. Like, I tried loading trucks one time when I was younger. I thought I won a national shop for a champion. And a guy, a white guy half my size was kicking my butt in that truck. And I said, God, you got to give me something else to do, man, because I'm not good at this stuff. <laughs> and God let God pay me to act a fool on TV. I basically get paid to act a fool, and I'm good at it. And I need to tell the kids, nobody believed in me uh, when I was growing up. You know, my first car came from a junkyard, a 62 Fairlane. So I guess my father thought of me as junk. But my spiritual father, Jesus Christ, said, no, I make you the president in a $100 million film, the first black president. So if God can do that for me, what can he do for the kids? So they need to know that they are the the chosen ones. They're not Generation X. Because if a kid don't know who he is, he can never step into his purpose and destiny. I'm on this phone today talking to you because a man came and told me about God and told me there's a different way than being a blood or a crib. I've been a drug dealer. I'm robbing people. And I'm sitting on the day as a testimony that that is real. I don't... Mm-hmm. All I got is a high school education. I went to college. But I never graduated from college. But I've been the biggest movie in 2008 that cost $200 million to make it. And it made $1.3 billion and it made $1.1 billion in merchandising. Dark night. I say Gotham City. Now, what's more gangster than that? <laughs> tell me. And that's and people and that's what they tell me when I go to New York. They say, "Debo, you say Gotham City. <laughs> you was cool with dying and sacrificing yourself for the greater good." 
Now, what's more gangster than that? Explain it to me. All right. So I'm always going to talk about the real gangster. The Bible says, fear his wrath. It don't say Debo. It don't say Shook Knight. It don't say nobody else. He says, fear what he can bring. Either love him. <laughs> yeah, so that's why I don't, you know, you don't ever want to wake up a giant. <laughs> You know, because when you wake up the wrong dog, you're going to get bit. This ain't a poodle. <laughs> this is a this is a rock wilder, baby. Lightning round. Hulk Hogan. Whatever. My he was the greatest. He was the greatest. Let me tell you something, though. Okay, he was the, he was the greatest. Because God always puts me with the, great, the best. He was the greatest. Macho man. Best tag team partner in the world. Vince McMahon. Great businessman. I know what you're dealing with, though. Ice Cube. The best business cat I've ever met in my life. And he pays me big. <laughs> Favorite actor to work with? It had to be, um... I've had the pleasure of working with Marlon Brando. So, when I was told in Hollywood... He's the greatest actor in the world, so I've worked with Marlon Brando. It don't get no bigger than that. Okay, now... Johnny, John, wait, John Candy yeah. was my best actor I've ever worked with, I feel. Okay. The late John Candy. Uh, who is the actor that you haven't got a chance to work with that you would want to work with? Denzel Washington. I want to do another movie. With, I want to. I work with Will Smith and on his TV show. I want to work with him in Hancock Two. Will, I want to do Hancock Two. I want to fight you in Hancock Two because I Will's one of the best persons on this earth. And um, I've, I've had the pleasure of meeting, working with Michael Jackson. He's gone. Great. The best three people I've ever met on this earth was Michael Jackson, John Candy, and Will Smith. And I want to do a film with Will Smith. I think he's the best. All right. Uh, favorite movie that you've ever done? What's your, what's your favorite? She played the president of Fifth Element. She, <laughs> <laughs> Luke Poussin. You better go see Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a better nickname, Zeus or the human wrecking machine? Shit. Man, Zeus is a Greek name for God. Man, what the hell are we talking about the other park ass? The human record machine. <laughs> human record machine don't mean nothing to me. I'm not human. I'm a god. I'm Zeus. You better bow down. <laughs> All right. And, and last one, John Cena. Yeah, right. <laughs> Just like vanilla ice on steroids. <laughs> okay. If you want to be something gangster, John, find a real guy from the hood. Stop pretending like you hood. <laughs> mm. Tattoos and roids don't make you hood. You got to come and sleep in hell if you want to be down with the real cast. That's why a game that sells over two million copies every time he do a song, an album, he says he want to be gangster like Debo when he was Zeus. Because when Gabe grew up in Compton, he heard about Zeus terrorizing, breaking people's heads in, in the WWE. But if they really want to turn me loose, because, you know, racism still exists, this don't get it twisted. Man, I should have took what Vince offered me. Vince pulled me to the side and said, you, we want you to carry the belt. And I saw that jealousy kick in. Because all of a sudden, the, the, the match was pulled. Mm. <laughs> Don't flip the script. So you can think somebody's from the same camp as your friend. He's your enemy. And I saw this run by myself. I tried being the cast friends. But uh, I'm tired of trying. You know what I'm saying? Sure. I'm a real actor, so watch me on TV, man. If you don't like me, you don't have to like me, but every time you turn that TV on, there's a movie with me in it, and that ain't nothing but the favor of Jesus Christ. Huh. Now tell that to the host, uh, <laughs> and, and your ass down in Tampa. Now, now we, uh, we've we covered a ton of issues today. We've talked a lot. We, we've answered a challenge um, Did I wake everybody up? You I hope so. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I come to wake everybody up. Because, you know, I heard they lost $400 million last year in the WWE. Because the MMA, everybody is leaving watching them. And they're going to watch the MMA fighting. 
Well, Monster, we, we with Bellator. We bought, we ran with Bellator. We went with my dude from the A team, the new A team. What's his name? Um, Quentin Rampage Jackson. Yeah, come on. And Rampage, much love to you, baby. Much love. I have, I have Rampage down in my corner. Watch my back. That's a good dude. Met him one time through Big U. Because, uh, and doing some stuff in the hood. We're doing some charity in the hood. <laughs> Me, him, and Bean. Um, for Big U. So, um, you know, what I'm trying to say is, man, I'm not a captain with the Palisades High School or Disneyland High School and say I'm from Compton. You know what I'm saying? Stop, people stop lying. You know what I'm saying? You didn't grow up like I had to grow up. And I'm going to tell you something. I was, man, I'm glad I made it up out of there. But it, it made me tough enough to handle Hollywood. It made me tough enough to handle any pressures that I deal with in life. So tell Johnny Cena, if he want to get his social media stuff up, stop paying somebody else. Just come and wrestle me. And all the rappers would jump all over this. <laughs> How can you take that? Now, if he don't answer the call, I guess, I guess he's... <laughs> <laughs> Because real cast answers the call. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. See, Hulk is too crippled for me to fight. You know what I'm saying? I found, you know, I can't, I can't fight Hulk. He's too banged up. So if I hit him hard, he might be in a wheelchair for the rest of his life. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So um, that's out the question. I thought I could go back and wrestle him and make some money because I got some unfinished business, but he's too banged up. And um, so... And I was, I was cool. I was going to do my movies and do my personal appearances, be a spokesperson. And John said some stupid stuff. My name came out of his mouth. My name should never come out of his mouth. And so I'm going to get some duct tape, and I'm going to kidnap his ass. <laughs> right for all of them WWE. See, I'm going to throw him in the trunk, and we're going to take off. And we're going to put him in the next rap video. He's going to be the bitch. <laughs> <laughs> If uh, people are trying to find you um, in in this world, call my age. manager, Cindy <laughs> Cowan. Yeah. Do you have you have the all the site? Do you have uh you have your own website? You have Twitter, right? All that. Yeah, I got real tiny lister. Is my is my is my Twitter. And uh, so you can find me there. It's such an honor to have you on and talking with us tonight. We really appreciate your time today. You can love you too, man. Sleep with your lights on. I still got the bicycle.